Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to take you through the pages of National Dailies, of course, at this time, uh, just before the hour of 8 o'clock. We do have a uh, guest who's in standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Ezekiel Yai, uh, we call him a toy kong. It's good to have you join us right here. Good morning. Nice to be on your station, as always. Thank you, Ezekiel. That's all right. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. And uh, I'd, I'd look at the top caption on the leadership newspaper, the big stories right here. The first says, Boni won't return as APC caretaker committee chairman. Erufa is quoted on that. Very interesting. See how things actually fall out just before. How many more days again before the elections for the APC? Uh, the elections are slated for the 26th and so far. We haven't had a different report. Says, Neck will ratify his removal next week. President asks us to vacate court order stopping convention. Boni remains chairman. APC senators insist. Bello inaugurates convention committee, releases zoning list. North Central retains chairman and Southwest gets secretary. And these are the riders under, uh, underneath the bold caption. Second Niger bridge to be ready next month. Gambari is quoted. And defection, Omai appeals sack by court. And just before we move away, this is really sad. Bandits kill 13 soldiers and five policemen in Kebi. So I saw pictures and it was really, really, really sad, you know, to see your soldiers lying very, uh, you know, lifeless and very helpless. The situation really looks bleak. And the question is, could it be that, you know, the security architecture has been overpowered by this um, bandit? West fear Russia may use unconventional weapons, and that's what you have here. And uh, we just take this one before we move away. As a strike, UTAS has failed integrity test, federal government insists. And that's the much we can take on the leadership this morning. Let's uh, turn attention to the headlines coming on the front page of the nation with a big one there. El Rufai, 19 APC governors endorsed Buni's removal. El Rufai, 19 APC governors endorsed Buni's removal. That's what El Rufai is saying, if you want to understand that headline. And the following writers, Buhari rebuffs lobbies. Yobe governor, Akpa Dodoedege, excluded from convention committee. What a life. Senate caucus stands by CECPC, that's the uh, convention, uh, the extra, uh, Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, the you know, Ketika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. The Senate caucus stands by CECPC chair. Party releases NWC zoning formula, neck meeting for March 17. And the big question, can the APC hold it's national convention. Let's not forget that uh, the PDP, when they elected their new national chairman, Ayoche Ayu, uh, threw a challenge to the APC to hold their own national convention. Uh, let's see if they can, they can beat or meet that challenge. Uh, many killed in bandits attack on deputy governor's convoy. We have another one. Senate refuses to amend electoral act, Lawan defense action. Abba carries extradition suit for hearing March 23. Why Nigeria can't meet OPEC quota by silver? That's uh, talking about Timmy Press Silva, the Minister of State for Petroleum. And uh, we have also still from the Nation newspaper, Umahi under fire for attacking judge. A boy governor, I respect judiciary. Air peace, Max United, three others form alliance. 50 returnees from Ukraine test positive for COVID-19, and seven men raped a 13-year-old. Really, really, really sad indeed. And we have a picture there of the tanker, the petrol tanker on fire at a filling station in Mushi area of Lagos yesterday. So the headlines coming on the front page of The Nation. Away from the Nation newspaper, we take a look at the Daily Independent and uh, start off with the bold caption that says how five APC governors stage coup against Boni. It's boldly written, Yobe Governor Akpano Doedege names missing in convention committee list. APC senators and says Boni remains 
party's caretaker chairman. Boni is gone. The secretary is gone. Governor Bello is in charge. Erufa is quoted. Uh, it's quite interesting seeing things, you know, going into the party. Um, you also have another thing. Senators throw out Buhari's request to amend Electoral Act. And some people say uh, when you talk about the Ninth Assembly, you say it's a rubber stamp. Uh, quite very interesting and strange. Federal government bans direct sales of farm produced to foreigners. That will be the crux of a conversation this morning as we proceed Auto crash claims 20 lives in Edo. Governor Mai, deputy, lawmakers appeal judgment, sacking them, and be a lambast to Mai over utterances and demands apology. And you remember when uh, the particular was saying the judgment is. Uh, uh, the, the judgment, it's a jungle justice kind of judgment. Five feet dead in another headsman attack in Benue. And as you strike, hope. Deems the federal government and sees the UTAS not better alternative to IPPIS. Uh, the sit this morning on uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. The Punch has this lead headline Bunis lawyers rebels colluded to procure judgment stopping convention El Rufai. Um, and the following writers Buhari, 19 governors behind Bunis removal. Support for Bello as new chair, Kaduna governor. Buni refused to implement Reconciliation Committee's recommendation, alleges El Rufai. An APC governor stabbing sick Buni in the back, alleges caretaker secretary Akpan Odoedege. At the top of that front page, 5G, Telco's mall faced rollout, fear consumers' weak purchasing power. Electro bill, Malami Amechi barred from primaries. Senate rejects Buhari's request. Of Messi said, we'll look at that much later on the program. Airfare hike looms over aviation fuel price. Marketers predict 700 naira per liter. God have mercy. NBA, Lambas Umahi, Sak Governor, hires 18 senior advocates of Nigeria to battle appeal, 18. More from the punch. Senate passes bill proposing 2% recovered loot for anti-graft agencies. CAC disowns firm awarded $214.8 million contract reps summon officials. <laughs> Petrol tanker explodes, Lagos filling station, building burnt, many homeless. Soldier detained for refusing to fight Boko Haram. Three bandits escape from Kogi detention. IG mourns as Deputy Inspector General slums, dies in Abuja. Lots of encomiums coming for that man. Nine killed, many injured in Edo Ogun road crashes. Bamiche reps ask federal government to investigate murder, decry female killings. Mob lynches suspected Ondo motorcycle thief, police arrest four. And 16 security agents killed as bandits attack Kebi deputy governor's convoy. Let's now bring in our guest analyst, Ezekiel Iyayetuk, at this time. Uh, Ezekiel Iyayetuk, did you... At any time, watch the Nigerian sitcom, uh, Fuji House of Commotion, because I would like us to start with uh, the internal wrangling in the APC. I don't know if you watched Fuji <laughs> House of Commotion. But your thoughts on what's, what's going on? Um, the move by Governor Sunny Bello and others in the, in the party is, is being seen as a coup. And I remember when Kwame Nkrumah was, was deposed as Ghanaian president, he traveled out. Um, is this a coup? And your thoughts on what's going on? Erufai has said that 19 governors are behind this move. Uh, Buni is a governor. He's one of them. So why is this happening? I, I, I see much deeper than the surface that we look at. And what really bothers me is I can see APC government and a correlation between what is going on and the nation as a whole. Because... The party is like a microcosm of their mindset, you know, on, on how they do things. As, you know, in Zamfara, Zamfara, there was a problem where a APC was excluded. As at today, for seven years, APC has not thought it 
necessary, fit to just have a national chairman, have a convention, have a national chairman, and just get on with your activities. As at today, not just the PDP, but some of us in the alternate party, we are waiting to go to the judgment, to the Supreme Court, as to whether a sitting governor can actually act on the position of a party chairman. And Lord have mercy. If the answer is in the negative, it means that once there's a convention chaired by a governor, and at that convention, the presidential um, candidate emerges, and you know, the process of election, you know, is such that somebody has to submit the names of the candidates to INEC. And if it comes to a judgment that the person who is the national chairman and the national secretary, in the case of um, the, the, the House of um, uh, National Assembly and, the, gov and the, the governorship and the presidency, if it so happens that the final judgment by the Supreme Court is that such a chairman, having been a governor, did not have the right to occupy the position of the national chairman of the party, on account of which he sends the names to INEC, it declares the whole thing a nullity. And that goes through the governor's descent, through the president descent, it means APC will not be on the ballot. And my simple question is, why take seven years to be on that avoidable risk? PDP quickly did their own, and they got a chairman who is, uh, I mean, why would a governor, why, why will a governor who has so much work to do, he cannot even finish the, the, the work of governing his state, now want to be the national chairman of a party. But, but, but is it yeah, to, sorry to interrupt, but, but the, the PDP also had the same situation with the governor of Adamawa oh, no, Adama State. No, but, but, but the current um, uh, National Working Committee or, or, of the party um, was brought to, into existence by a convention organized by a group, a Ketika uh, chairman, oh, you're not being getting, Adamawa you're not State getting, governor. You're not getting my point. My point is that there is a provision in the Constitution that bars public office holders from occupying executive positions in the party. Yes, yeah, so the, the question I'm, I'm asking, if I, if I can put it correctly, is um, is the PDP also in danger of falling uh, foul of this law? Because the, the processes are brought in this, this uh, National Working Committee uh, was chaired by the Adamawa State Governor. No, what INEC knows is who signs the documents that come to me. Whatever you did in your party before now is not INEC's business. INEC starts with the forms you have sent to me. Who signed them? How the man got into office or did not get into office is the party's issues. But I have names before me signed by a man does he have the right, the local standing, to submit these names to me? Yes or no? You understand me? So how the man got into office is not his internal party problem, which others can go to court over. But Annette's problem is the signatures that I have, are they authentic or not? That's where the process starts. And that is what really bothers me. And my question is, what is the wisdom in pushing this at such a risk, knowing it has happened to you before, Zamfara State, you can't forget so soon. So to what extent does PAPC believe in being brazen and being audacious and being nonchalant about you know, the law? To what extent are they so bold that they believe they've got it in their pocket? And I think it's something that really bothers me, not just because of their party, but the fact that they are in the nation. Are they, are they taking similar risk concerning issues of state? It's something that we, we need to think about. And what, what if Buni gets angry and decides, you know what, I'm going to defect to the PDP 
And then Wiki gives him a call and says, let's go, let's go to court. <laughs> you know, it might be another and river state situation again. Trust me, it is one reason that is absolutely nonsensical. It's, let me just hit the way it is. It is not necessary. Why can't, if you cannot put yourself together in seven years, seven years, why, why, how do you expect, you see, what's happening in APC is I think there's some kind of fifth columnist, you know, within the whole. And I want people to just empty their minds and wait because 2023 is going to be a different ball game altogether. Look at one, two, three things that have happened. Number one is the Electoral Act 2022. Take time and study that Electoral Act. There are things that could only come through God. Could only come through God. Secondly, what happened yesterday, where the national, where the, 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 the Senate unanimously said, Mr. President, we're sorry, we aren't going to do this for you. Things are starting, level down the change. And 2023, forget about whether they are small parties, they are big parties. No, what makes a party today, if Tinubu defects to a, a, a ADC, it becomes a big party overnight. Overnight. You don't need one year, you don't need five years. Need... Look at a man like Pankwaso. He picked up PP, uh, uh, NNPP within a week that hitherto non-existent party became a national talk. So let people just free their minds and just relax. Forget about time. Many moves are going to happen, especially as concerning APC. And 2023 is going to be something different from people what people are used to. So um, Zika and I took uh, with all this going on, today's the 10th of March and uh, the convention for the EPC is slated for the 26th of March. Do you see uh, that convention happening anytime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the convention is going to happen. But it is at the convention that things are going to fall apart. Because the convention holds the key to which faction is going to have access to the structure of the party. You know, we all know this, that APC is <laughs> an amalgam. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. it it's, it's, it's fair, it's, you know, in, 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 you have either physical or how do I put it that is, that's very easy to understand. You know, think, if you have sand and stone, do you understand me? You can pick out the sand, you can pick out the stone, do you understand? But there are certain mixtures that you, you cannot, they've gelled and they've become, you know, it, it's like water and gari, hot water and gari. Once you put it, they become, you know, brethren. You can't separate them. But if you carry glass and you carry stone, you can pick them. Now, APC has refused to become hot water and gari. They have remained stone and glass. In which case, at the convention, there's going to be a separation, very neat separation, because the, the part that loses out is going to seek self landing. And then they're going to come to us in ADC and say, guys, let's work together. They may remain in the party to play the fifth columnist role. They may remain in the party to wait for the dying minute. They may remain in the party to enjoy the loot of office, to enjoy the pact of office, to know the game plan, and then at election, all it needs is like two weeks to election, you see mass defection, you see mass. Meanwhile, there are nocturnally, you know, I know how many of them are talking to me as an individual. I know, because but, but, I'm a built member of ABC. But you see, in politics, you don't just open your mouth and start to talk. You've got to just keep it the way it is. Yeah. What will be, will be. Basically, are we not forgetting in a hurry what happened to the PDP only just recently, a few months ago. Um, of course, um, the way and manner in which um, uh, uh, Uche Secundus was removed from office, quite controversial, he went to court. We had uh, judgments, you know, conflicting judgments from courts of court in jurisdiction in different parts of the country. Um, nothing pulled the party down, the party is still standing. And uh, the governors of the party took the reins of the party led by um, former 
Speaker of the House of Representatives. They uh, handed the party over to a caretaker uh, chairman in the person of um, Amadou Umar Fintiri, governor of Adamawa State, who as a governor um, organized the convention of the party which produced Iyo Chayu. Um, nothing has happened. Like they say, nothing's poor. The party is still moving on. So are we not forgetting the recent history? Um, and can we not, not draw from this a P PDP experience to say nothing will happen? All your fears may no, not, I'll, may I'll not I'll come to pass. Yes, I'll tell you two things. First is that I'm a, I would call a foundation. I, I was or had been a foundation member of the PDP. In 2007, I contested the governorship on the platform of the PDP. Somewhere along the line, I became the chairman of Ward and Local Government Congress Committee of the PDP to one of the states, which is one of the highest responsibilities you can perform in the party because you go there to set up the structure of the party in a state is a major function, about 36 or 37 of you in the whole country. I was one of them. That said, there's something about the PDP that if they learn the lesson early enough, there's something, the PDP is homogeneous. The PDP is relatively together and they have been consistently so from the beginning till now. The PDP has certain, you know, called followership in certain areas people that you've lived with, people that you've worked with, party that you've seen as your own, it is they are not being wise and strategic, strategic that allows certain key people like Alaji Kwan Kwaso to leave. You know, they are sometimes maybe arrogant about certain things. It doesn't matter. They extended that arrogance and lost the presidency because by the time five governors are leaving you and you say it doesn't matter, that means you've allowed, allowed that, that uh, brazenness to get into your brain which is what APC is doing now. Let's go to the court. It doesn't matter. It matters. So PDP has that advantage of being like um, a chemistry. They are together, so to speak. So that things can tilt one side and they can recover. But APC does not have that history, does not have that, that, that capacity, does not have that privilege of, of PDP. And secondly, PDP has a way of being smart. They saw this coming. They nipped it in the bud. They addressed it before time. Now they are settled to face election. Okay? Now, APC, on the other hand, have just let it linger. At the convention, which is just about two weeks away, my calculation is right, you will see what will happen. And that time is less than four months to primaries. Is that the time for you to go and start to talk of reconciliation when you know you've lost the structure? There's no reconciliation. Reconciliation means what? You're going to give me back the structure? No. In a quiet bone, for instance, there was a time that they had three chairmen. Each of them had their list, you know, down line, down line, down line. If you allow that to happen, at the end of the day, you pick one. You know, they endorse uh, Senator Odoi Now, there's a man like us, like Fabio. Is he in that camp? If he's not in that camp, what is he going to do with all the people in his camp? Hand over to, you know, uh, uh, Senator Odoi assuming he's given the ticket. Or say, guys, we've weighed our strength. Let's go to ADC. Nyaito, come, let's talk. How do we do these things? And they see our strength, see their strength. Politics is a game of interest. It's not religion. In Nigeria, politics is not religion. It's on the, the closest to politics being religion is PDP, but they are not strategic. <laughs> the rest is like game of interest. They can move in and move out anywhere, anytime, any day, anyhow. Okay? So I think that PDP case cannot be compared with that of APC for the simple reason that the ideological underpinning of membership are not in the same direction. PDP right now, APC right now is strictly interest, 100% interest. But the PDP has some level of you know, sentiment and attachment to it, which can help in times of crisis. APC does not have that liberty and that luxury and that privilege. Ezekan Yaitok, let's, let's look at the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, this is really sad because yesterday I saw uh, some of these pictures that were being displayed and you could see the, the men of the Nigerian army, I mean, dressed in their attire, just lying lifeless. And, uh, you know, it saddens me. Uh, so we have this report saying bandits kill 13 soldiers and fight policemen in Kebi. The question here is... Is the security architecture of the country being overwhelmed at the time by bandits? 
Uh, you know, for a little while, there seemed to have been some level of quiet, and um, people are moving so much into politics and all that. So the bandits are at such a time also re-strategizing, and from time to time they strike. They are setting things in a thinking government that never give way to politics. Never, never, never. One of such fundamentals is uh, what you call the national security. And if you notice, for almost seven years from the, admin from, from the, the inception of this administration, the issue of banditry, you know, and, uh, you know, the terrorism, has been on the front burner. So politicians cannot expect that it would just because of politics, you know, go like that. So I expected the presidency to have been on top of the game at all times, making sure that even when politics is going on, the issue of national security is top priority at all times. I think that, the, 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 in my opinion, um, there, there had been a case of taking the, 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 the foot off the pedal a little bit. But you see, that said, recently, um, Governor El Rufai has said something very, very, very vehemently. He said, look, these guys, they will group and regroup. They will strike and restrike. It is their business, just like politics is our business. So if there are a problem to us, find a permanent solution. Whatever it is, there's going to be collateral damages. Now that they've been called terrorists, it helps in the rules of engagement. But ever since they were declared terrorists, what one action have you seen taken that will now put the, 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 the heat on, this, on these people? Instead, what you've seen is everybody facing politics, politics, politics. And I think this is a wake-up call. It pains me as, 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 as a father, as a husband, as a brother, to see those lifeless bodies because they are people's husbands, people's fathers, people's breadwinners. And, and we need to feel the life of everybody, not only those that are protected, but those who put their, themselves in, in harm's way to protect us. I think that this government owes not, not, not just an apology, but they owe it to, to the military, to those people at the front lines, to, to show that their lives matter. That's where I, I would like to end at this point, because it's very emotional and, and very, very um, okay. annoying. All right. All right. All right. Uh, very understandable at, at that. Uh, is clear, took, let's um, get back to the politics. Um, uh, here to David Umahi, uh, who's been... You know, he had to cool, calm, and collected David Umahi. I mean, never had him say anything wrong in public. Never had him attack anyone. Just cool. Um, but he's proven to us that every man has a breaking point. Um, because of the adjectives that he's used to describe Justice Yayako of the Federal High Court in Abuja, um, one would not have expected that. One of the things he said was that um, uh, the judgment that sacked him as governor of Eboy State was bought. He's had some very... Um, 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 very, very uncharitable things to say about the justice. Even though he's the judge, even though he's apologized and says that he would never insult the judiciary, but the records are there as to what David Umahi has said. In the front page of the Punch newspaper has this headline um, NBA Lambas Ubahi sacked Governor Hires 18 senior advocates of Nigeria to battle appeal. And what this story is saying is that the Nigeria Bar Association. On Wednesday, Ambassador the Iboyan State Governor David Mahi for attacking Justice Nyeko of the Federal High Court who sacked him on Tuesday uh, and his deputy as well. Um, he said that, um, anyway, among allegations, the governor had alleged that the judgment by a court was bought, but while criticizing the adjectives, adjectives used on the judge by the governor, the NBA said Umahi's outburst amounted to impunity and executive rascality taking too far. So we see the NBA having a major uh, uh, say in national issues. But also, uh, give us your thoughts on that and also the fact that uh, Umaya has hired 18 senior advocates of Nigeria for his appeal. Okay, let me start from the bottom to the front. What is the bottom? He's hired 18 senior advocates. He might as well hire 50. It is not his money. It's a boy people's money. And he needs to know that 
it was a constitutional that he swore to, to be able to defend uh, the resources of the people. That's number one. Number two, I do a lot of mentoring, particularly of um, young people. And one of the things I tell young ladies in relationship is when a guy is nice, 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 find a way to do something absurd, something ridiculous. Find a way to do something that will bring out the real him for you to know, wow. <laughs> and the same thing, you know, goes the other way. Because it's easy to play cool and nice until you hit the nerves. And when you get married, one way or the other, you are going to hit the nerves. And all of a sudden, you, you discover that this guy you thought was just as gentle, as gentle as a lamb gives you the slap of your life. And you're like, what? Okay. So you've got to know at the height of provocation, what sort of person thing is this person and it goes into our leadership recruitment when we how much do we know about the people we want to see as our governors or as our president what do we know how much do we know what do we understand what what was the breaking point of 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 this person that you are supporting what do you know about this person i think that what um, 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 governor umai did is is an apology, is something that even at the height of provocation, another thing is that our public office holders need to be coached at all times. They need to be coached and know that their utterances, you know, I think it was Shakespeare, I'm not too sure, that said, words spoken cannot be unspoken. You need to know that. And as a public office holder, you don't have that liberty of saying anything you want, anyhow you want, any way you want. You can't have that liberty. You are representing so many people, millions of people. You are the face of your state. As of today, I can't even talk anyhow. Because as a mentor, where a lot of young people look up to, they are saying things and are not expected of me. Not to talk of when you become the governor of a state. And then you say unprintable things because you were provoked. No. I always tell people say politics is a dead game. I say no. Politics is a magnifier. Politics is microphone. It gives you opportunity to, to show who you really are. It gives you opportunity for you to really display who you are. If you're a fair-minded person, you're a fair-minded person, even in office, in all things that you do. So politics is not a dirty game. Politics gives you the capacity, that, that, that latitude, that space for you to really show who you really are. And I think that Umayi, when this thing hit him personally, he lost all his school he laid down his guard and he showed who he really 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 is and for somebody who wants to be a president i'll tell you that he couldn't have had a bigger dent than that nationally and it was a stage that he had to show he was a statesman he was one who believes in rule of law one who says this are not and my people cool down these are the steps i'm taking and not to say it's been bought it has been i listened to it and man i was appalled because it's not, it's not a statement that anybody could make, not to talk of a governor against the judiciary. You can't do that. Now he's going back to meet those guys. They will say, bros, bring the money, share with the buy you, they buy us, come and buy us well. You know, even those that are going to defend them, they know that this is a man that called us all thieves. And all the people that are going to defend him, we are going to be looking at them as the eye as hey, how much they don't collect, how much they don't pay, because the man believes that you can't get justice except you pay for it. So I think that um, he's in for a rough ride, and only God can help him at this point in time. Thank you very much, Ezekiel. I took, um, like someone said, another one bites the dust. <laughs> well, um, we'll, we'll, dust. <laughs> we'll keep watching um, what happens in, in all the stories you've talked about, be it uh, Fuji House of Commotion or any other one. But I want to thank you very much for your time. Very incisive and expert analysis is given to us as usual. Very exciting. And uh, we're glad to have had you this morning. Thank you so much. God bless the two of you and all of us. And I, I, I th I'm sure Messi has taken note of that advice you gave uh, on, <laughs> on testing the man uh, who proposed to her. <laughs> but I don't, what I, I don't know whether I, I, I subscribe to that, <laughs> but I, I think uh, Mercy is taking note. It's very important. Nah. Uh, I, hope Mercy. <laughs> I hope you're not the suspect. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 we'll talk about that behind the scenes. But um, uh, Mercy, I saw her just scribbling something down when you said that. Test mm. the man. Mm. 
Mm. So, good. Ezekiel, thank you so much for being part of the show. We do appreciate. I mean, it's always a delight to hear you uh, share your yes. thoughts and all of this the national issues. Are just awesome you thank do you. well. Thank you. Well, that's the size of it this morning of the press. We will return with of the press tomorrow, and it would be the last for the week. But um, it's been very interesting if you ask with a conversation on the top uh, relationship you know, top advice coming out of the press. No, you don't, you don't get better than that. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. But we have to take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation. I mean, the federal government banning sales of farm produce to foreigners. Uh, not. Uh, it doesn't have to be direct right now. There will have to be a middleman. That would be the crux of our conversation when we return. Well, in the meantime, let's tell you what happened today in history. Been the 10th day, the month of March. Please stay with us.